You freak it. Okay. Hi, everyone. It's Ann and V. Today, we're going to be doing template eight. So if you missed it, you can still get it um, on the Etsy link. Um, it's We're doing two things from the Etsy shop. It's one is the actual template eight. And then the second thing is the, what did you call that, V? The middle, the- The centers, the floral yes, the centers. centers, which are these. Oh, we did the which same Which one did time. you choose? I, oh no, I did the circle dots. Oh, okay, cool. Yeah, I chose this one for our flower today. Awesome, awesome. Okay, so I totally cheated. Uh, so I, <laughs> I, got, I got back super late yesterday, like yesterday night, probably like around 1130 at night, right? So I, um, uh, this morning I woke up and I must have eaten something really bad because uh -oh. I up in bags. <laughs> so like I was uh, like really covered in them. So when you sent the links, I was like, the cricket's cutting. I'm not hand cutting this. <laughs> <laughs> so I do want to show everybody what happens. Like I'll walk everyone through that process. So, okay. um, so when you buy it, right, you get this download. And last time what I did was I printed it just like this. And then I cut each one of these uh, petals out and then I trace them on a piece of paper and then I cut, hand cut them, right? Like, like I've seen we do many times. Yeah. Um, so this time what I did instead was I, I did print them because you attach them all or it, it comes in like an eight page or however many pages, but I right. couldn't separate them, right? Like to download and upload into design space. Correct. So Hi, Kim. We got a quick comment. Um, so what <laughs> I did instead was um, I printed it out. And then because we're doing petals four, five, six, and seven, six mm -hmm. months of each, right? So I took a picture and then I uploaded it into Design Space. And then I, I you know, cropped everything out and um, <laughs> just the petal. So the petal looks really clean, but I didn't do a good job of... Um, of really like deleting the outlines. So I'm going to show you really close up front. You can see I have like jagged edges. Like I could hear my cricket yeah. working <laughs> over time. It was like, do, 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 you know? <laughs> so I knew it wasn't a smooth edge, but I was in a crunch. I did it. So this is what my petals, I mean, my petals look. So, so don't be better. upset with me, <laughs> Anne. <laughs> so don't be upset with me, but I, I included it in the email, the PNG file of the petal. That is meant for Cricut upload. <laughs> and I didn't mention it. I didn't know if I were going to do Cricut or not. So, no! so, so you don't have to go through all the steps that Anne did. But um, within my templates, I offer the printable file for those that don't have Cricut. But I do include as a, a courtesy for my machine users to upload the PNG file. Now it is only a single petal because I'm not that SVG savvy and I will admit that like every day. But um, the PNG file shape is available in within the purchase. And what you do is when you upload it, you can duplicate the petal and then from the printable, just modify it based off of the measurements that I provide on the printable. <laughs> um, okay, so I did see your PNG file, okay, and then, but I was like, it's only one petal, so, duh, it didn't occur to me to resize everything, because I had to resize everything anyway, like, right. I, you know, took the picture, uploaded it, I was not working so much. <laughs> <laughs> but the, I promise, the PNG file, it won't give you your jagged edges, because what I do is, when I'm designing the petal, and I get it cut out, um, what I need to do is I need to make sure that the sizing that I do on the printable um, form matches the sizing in Cricut. So the petals that you see me trace in my video tutorials are going to be Cricut cut just because I have to do it anyway to make sure that they size up to what's yeah, being yeah. printed. But yeah, I'm sorry, Anne. I should have uh, mentioned that. <laughs> no, I should have figured that out. But I, at the time, I was like, oh my God, there's only an hour left. Oh my God. <laughs> well, um, I did let Anne know that I have not hand cut mine. So when I get the camera down on my hands, I will quickly show you how to get these hand cut. No, that's um, awesome. 
And um, so Kim said, it took me a few times to answer. <laughs> I know. Now that I think about it, I'm like, duh, that makes so much sense. Um, yeah, no, I, but I do, I will say I like the way, well, okay, so I, I cheated multiple ways. I then also used 12 by 24 paper. So that okay. it was quick, you know? Yeah, that will um, definitely speed up the process for sure. But I guess my only, my problem is going to be that my paper is going to be thicker than what you're using. Because this is Cricut 12 by 24. I mean, I'm going to make it work, but okay. it's a good comparison. What, what weight is the Cricut 12 by 24? Do you know? I want to say it's 80. It feels okay. like 80 to me. Okay. And it's um, also, it's not smooth. It's got texture. So Okay. That should work. I know I, um, in the past I've tried 110 pound just because that's what Michael's was selling. They started selling different colors of the 110 pound. And I will say I was not a fan just because <laughs> it's so harsh on your hands and it's so right. thick. Um, and I never, I, I think I made maybe one flower out of that cardstock, um, weight and I never went back. So 80 should be okay. I okay. think you should be well, perfectly <laughs> So no, I can't wait to see you hand cut the whole thing. So, okay. So since my last live with V, V like gave me some, you know, I saw what she was using. So I <laughs> did have, I went and bought the same scissors that she uses, just a different yes. color. Yes. But it's the Fisker from Joann's. Mm -hmm. And then I also went and got the dowels. I yes. Use. If you guys remember last time I used a marker, I think I used a Crayola marker. But <laughs> these, so V, I was so bummed though, because I went to get all the links, right? So I linked, um, I think Celeste is going to drop it here now, the centers and the template, eight, the template eight. Uh-huh. Um, she must be sold out. These were not so she is actually on break. So oh. Julie is a snowbird. So she's going down south for the next three weeks. Um, I think she'll have them back up on February 16th. But she officially went down um, south and she doesn't want to have to ship when she's out of state. So um, the last day for her existing orders was on Friday, but she will be back on February 16th and putting them back in the Etsy shop. <laughs> oh, but I, when I open this, I'm like, I love it. I love that it's colored. Like yeah. Colored. And I have my little map and color coding, um, sheet that she included here right on, on the wall. So that way I can see when I'm designing. And I had no idea that you needed this many sizes. Like, <laughs> Yeah, it just depends on the flower sizes for sure. But yeah, um, I didn't never typically use the three fourths of an inch or even the half inch. It uh -huh. was typically the smaller five. But um, I'm glad she included these because I do have some templates with much larger petals where these would be useful for. Oh, and then I didn't realize. And then she she gives you a duplicate of the smaller ones. Yes, yes, she does Which include lost, duplicates. That, right? yeah. <laughs> yeah, because um, I just happened to break one the other day during a live, oh. and I was like, "Ding!" But I glued it back together. She can't really tell, but I do have my extras saved so that way, in case I lose one, it rolls off the desk or you know gets behind the desk. We always have extra. <laughs> I love it. Love it. Well, I'll read through the comments while you flip your camera, I think, right? That's what Yeah, I'm going to flip it. I'm going to put it back. I'm going to put it up in this holster here. So, so I, yeah, so I, the whole thing I cut on the Cricut. And then um, before I read through the comments, I do want to post this. So if you want to see me and myself, we will be together in Texas Valentine's Day weekend for, um, for everyone who is taking the in-person workshop in Arlington, Texas, which is Valentine's Day weekend, uh, there is a special meet and greet and there's about 18 of us like crafting um, crafters that you may recognize. Uh, there's so the meet and greet is an hour and it's for you to make contacts, um, ask questions. I mean, it's such a wide range of women and we're so awesome together. <laughs> I'm super excited about that. Um, uh, but if you can't make it in person, I totally get it. Um, we have our Zoom classes this weekend. It's the first weekend of February. 
uh, we have a special code for everyone starting now. It's V, all lowercase V-E-E, -E, and that will get you 50% off to any tickets to XOXO Craft Girls. So you got to hurry, though, because we are literally like less than two weeks out. So uh, yes, it's going to be a lot of fun, guys. Can you see my my desk? Yes. OK. And then the pedals are to the left and then your your papers to the right, right? Over here, right? And scissors Perfect. are to my right. Okay. <laughs> I just want to make sure. I'm yeah, like yeah. trying to look through the camera, but you know how it goes with the holsters and all of that. So let me see here. Okay. So I, oh, there, I could see it on here on the right side. So let oh, me good. move this. All right. So let's see. Let's got a lot of this. hellos. So hi, everyone. We've got from everywhere. Will this stay on Facebook? Yes, it'll stay on Facebook as well as YouTube. So you just have to go to the live section. It's definitely going to be on mine, the useless crafter, but I will, um, we're going to figure out whether or not it's going to show up on V's account, but we will link everything so that you will be able to find her easily as well as the templates. Um, and hi, Phyllis and Sylvia and Cindy, Cheryl. Oh my gosh. Hi, everybody from okay. Erie, Pennsylvania, too. <laughs> I love it. All right, so I'm going to bring this closer. Okay, um, so Cindy's asking, do we need those wooden sticks and where can we get them? So the wooden dowels, you can purchase from your local uh, Michaels, your local uh, Walmart um, in the kids crafting section. Now, the ones that we have specifically, we purchased from Photo Fab Paper Flowers, but she is on vacation right now. So they're not available currently in her Etsy shop. But um, you, if you need some, you can find them for, you know, a dollar and some change at Walmart in the kids crafting section. We're not going to use all of these tonight. Uh, for tonight's video tutorial, we will be using the three eighths of an inch our five sixteenths of an inch, the yellow and red. <laughs> I was and, just going to ask you for the colors. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so those are the two we're going to use. Now, as far as my tutorials go, I will be using these going forward. So um, like on my tutorials here on Facebook or, you know, whenever I'm posting and going live. So um, I will reference them. But if you don't have these specific ones from Julie, I will let you know what size dowels they are. And B, I have a quick question for you. Mm -hmm. I did not. Did you tell me which base to use? I did not, but we are using the five and a half inch hexagon. Okay. <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> I didn't know. My five and an inch, five and a half inch hexagon. So we are going to use the template eight for my uh, template collection. Again, as uh, Anne and I were talking, this is a printable file. I do offer it in printable format. So all of the petals are sized ready to go. And then you simply cut outside of the black line and you will have your 10 petal pattern. Now it's all the same petal shape, just 10 different sizes. That gives you a variety of uh, flower sizes that you can make and styles. I do offer a variety of tutorials, um, you know, each month and on a weekly basis. And each month we're working on a different set of templates, but I guarantee template eight, you can probably find at least seven to 10 tutorials here on Facebook um, of flowers I've made previously using this template. So today we're just using petals four, five, six, and seven, these four petal sizes. And all of the other petals are just gonna be off on the sidelines and we will use those at another time on a different day. So with these petals, Anne did get them cut out with her, her Cricut machine. And for you guys, I'm gonna show you how I get them cut by hand. So I'm gonna do my best to fit as many petals as possible. This is eight and a half by 11, 65 pound cardstock. And I'm gonna use this pink shade. And you can purchase cardstock from your local craft store. Um, like Michael's, um, Joann's for sure. And you can also buy on Amazon, like using Astro Brights or things like that. So as long as, long as it's 65 pound, I know Anne is using 80 pound, which is still a workable um, cardstock. Uh, you just want to be careful not to use like 110 pound because you will strain your fingers 
and your hands trying to cut curl that thick of a um, cardstock paper. So right now I'm just tracing petal four, six, and seven on one sheet. Now we do need six of each of these uh, petals. So six of petal four, five, six, and seven. So I trace petal four, six, and seven. And I'm gonna take this top sheet and I'm gonna take two sheets underneath. So that way, when I cut out these petals, I'm gonna end up cutting three at a time. So I'm gonna go ahead and use my scissors to cut. And we have a question. How do you match the dowel with the petal size? Um, for me, because of the fact that I've been doing this for so long, I truly just, when it comes to these petals and because these are a little bigger, I wanna make sure that the petal is going to be able to wrap around the dowel enough to give it some sort of cur curl. Now, if I were trying to curl the petal and use the three fourths of an inch dowel, it's much thicker. I'm not gonna get too much of a curl because the petal is not gonna be able to wrap around it. Whereas our three eighths of an inch is gonna get a nice wrap around the, the actual cardstock side of the petal. And we so, almost want to just wrap it one time so it's not like rolling constantly. Yeah, yeah, okay. and it also just depends on how much detail of a curl you want to give the curl pattern on each petal. In our case, I want this flower to be pretty open, so I don't want to curl it too much to okay. where it's going to you know, kind of change the shape of the petal itself. But as we work our way through, you're gonna notice where even if these are really curled, the edges, you're going they're gonna pop out once we make our petals three-dimensional um, with our center cut and then the overlap. Right, right. I'm so ready this time. I feel like <laughs> <laughs> so let me... gonna, while you're cutting, I'm gonna bring out the flower that we did last time. Okay, cool. Hello, and everyone. I have a, quite a few people on here. Yeah. Um, yeah. Kathy says she wants to go to the workshop, but the discount code isn't working at the moment. Yeah. Um. Go ahead and reach out, or Celeste, to take down the name, and then we'll reach out to you. Um. Oh, is is Celeste going to do that? Yeah. It's, yeah, it's for Kathy. Kathy Keister. Mm-hmm. And then this is the flower I did last time. Isn't it pretty? You I did love. so good. Did you <laughs> see um, Josie's flower? I, you know what? So I was away this weekend. And oh, I was that's right. You were skiing. Yeah, I, so I was just catching up. I didn't get to see the flower. I saw like a quick post, but I didn't, um, I didn't have a chance to like, zoom in and analyze <laughs> she did so good i mean both of y'all did have done really well with paper flowers y'all are definitely underestimating yourselves <laughs> but she was just so nervous about it i'm like josie you got this girl and she did so good um nothing can be as bad as the way i was schooled on this special 3d letter from the carolinas <laughs> <laughs> That live took three hours and I didn't finish. Like I, towards the end, I'm like, I'm going to stop before I make a mistake that I can't recover from. And so then I had to do it, you know, so then I was just like reading the questions and answering people's questions and, and stuff like that. And then um, it took me a couple of days to get back to it because, you know, I was just busy and then I finally did it and then I'm almost done because I, I made an off the mat Wednesday to go with it. So oh. <laughs> it's going to come out this week, this week sometime. Finally. <laughs> okay, so I'm almost done. I just need petal five. So I've cut petal four, six, seven. I have six of each and then I'm just going to go in with petal five. You're so fast. And are you using a pencil to outline it, to trace yes. it? Yes. Yeah, it's just a pencil. Okay. Yeah. No, because I'm stealing all your tools. <laughs> <laughs> um, what color paper are you using? 
Um, for me, I'm using this, I guess you can, it's not a blush pink, but it's a light pink. You can find it in the Flamingo Paper Pack from Michaels. And I'm using, I'm using the Cricut, they have 12 by 24 paper, and it's one of those like sampler packages, so it's a cream color. Oh, okay, um, nice. So I cut everything cream. Like I match the, in the, the inside of my petals or the inside of the flower. And also the petals are all one color. Okay. And I did this coral color from, this is a 12 by 12. Um, it was a 12 by 12 sheet from the Hot Buy Paper Packs from Michaels. It's oh, I like the, that. I think it's called Pinks and Corals Paper Pack. So it's a nice coral, bright coral color. Yeah, no, that looks good. So we are done cutting our petals and all I need is my base. So I'm just gonna quickly trace. And then we're gonna get started. So you did everything in about, I don't know, that was like 18 minutes while you were talking. <laughs> So that was definitely faster than my cricket because you know I had the, the jagged edges. Um, so yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, and I do get that question often. What is the difference between using your cricket or what's the benefit of hand cutting versus your cricket? And I do own multiple cricket machines, but even with all of them running. Um, as much as I enjoy Cricut, it's just a lot faster to hand cut because you can layer multiple sheets on top of each other. Now, if you are new to paper flowers, I recommend that you don't start out with three or four sheets of cutting layers. Maybe start off with two just because you don't want to um, injure yourself. Um, I know in the beginning when I was making paper flowers, I would my fingers would really cramp up and I wouldn't listen to my body. <laughs> and they would be in pain, they would be sore. So don't do that, don't do what V does, but my hands have gotten used to it for sure over time. So V, um, I know you used from the paper packs, so but it's different than the, than the Recollections paper that you use normally, right? No, this one is the same, it's still Recollections brand, it's just the uh, Flamingo. The I guess the paper pack color is called Flamingo. Okay, got it. Okay. Um, okay, so now that we have all of our petals cut, uh, we're going to get to styling the petals, okay? So we always start from the outer larger petals and are wor working our way to the smaller petals. So we're going to take petal seven, which is our largest petal layer, and we have six total. Yep. And... What I'm going to do, I'm just trying to make sure I move this. Okay. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take three of uh, the six that we have, because I don't want to try to cut and curl um, the petals all at the same time, just because, again, protecting my hands and putting, you know, the least amount of strain on them. So um, I'm going to take three at a time. I'm going to take my three eighths of an inch dowel. And we're going to curl the edges both in the same direction. So I'm going to take my dowel underneath. And then I am going to curl it to where it does overlap underneath just a little bit. And then it's going to keep the curl for the edge of your petal. And don't be afraid to curl your petal. Don't... Um, don't hesitate to curl. You do want it to have a nice curl. Again, the curl is going to loosen up once we start assembling the petals as well. Thank you, Kim. Alice um, asked about the centers. This is still, this is, I think these are considered 65 pound cardstock. The difference is that this was a 12 by 12 sheet and it is a little bit textured. It's just textured cardstock as well. Mine so is the same, yeah. Mine is textured and I did, I did, I think 80 pounds, but I love okay. this. It's so pretty. Um, so when you would recommend the Cricut to cut your centers, right? 
Yes. So these centers that I, I ju actually just released these last week and the centers are meant to be cut with your Cricut. I don't offer them in a PNG format or a printable format because if I wouldn't cut them by hand, I wouldn't expect <laughs> anyone else to. Um, and so I do show in other tutorials and actually the majority of my tutorials how to hand cut centers. Now they're not gonna be super um, you know, detailed with these little stems uh, like you would with a Cricut, but I do show how you can cut uh, hand cut centers with a few additional materials like an X-Acto knife um, or a paper cutting machine, like a manual cutting machine. And I have tutorials here on Facebook that show you those processes. So if you don't have a Cricut, it is okay. You can still make paper flowers. It's not required. But I do know that for me personally, because of my carpal tunnel, I want to make sure that I'm not stressing my my wrist and my elbow out by utilizing my Cricut. So you'll see me use a lot more Cricut cut centers going forward for that reason. <laughs> oh yeah, you freaked me out last time when we cut this center in my hand. <laughs> um, that was with just a pair of scissors. So. <laughs> And uh, we have Adriana just joined too, which I'm hey so there. excited to meet them. I'm That's super excited. <laughs> okay, so we have our petal seven, both edges curled away. Mm -hmm. And now we're gonna take our scissors and we're gonna create a cut up the center from that bottom straight edge. And this is going to create our base. So we're gonna do a cut. And for this one, we're gonna do a four and a half inch cut. Now I do have my cutting or my uh, mat here, my work mat. And so I use it to make sure I'm doing the proper measurement. So this is a four and a half inch cut on petal seven. And you're gonna do that for all six petals for petal number seven, okay? That's a deep cut. Yeah, it's pretty deep on this one. We want it to, we want the petals to start by being very open and wide, um, just because we're doing a pretty large center. So we want to be able to fit that in the middle. Kim is asking what center. So Kim, I just released the centers in my Etsy shop. It is actually a bundle and it comes with eight different centers. And I chose this one specifically. I think Anne chose a different one, but ours are both from the same file because there are two separate files. Each file, sorry, I can't even separate these. Each file comes with four images and then you just use the contour feature on Cricut to separate them. Um, I didn't use the contour. I thought it came in as a as a PNG file. Yeah, it's a PNG file, but you would have to separate them with the contour feature. Did you cut all of them out? No, I didn't. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't, but for some reason, I didn't think I could contour. So I, you know, I just brought in a circle because they're all very, you know, they're all circular. Oh, circular. So I put in a circle, made it really big to cover just the one center that I wanted to use. And then I sliced it and then deleted the other petals. But and I need to do a better job giving you. I, I don't know. Okay, you know, you know what? I was functioning on very little sleep. And then I also <laughs> took medication. So I think <laughs> I feel like normally I'm better. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, so for PNG files, it allows you to contour. So on the centers, um, in the centers bundle, there's two files that come within that bundle. I think somebody's asking, um, so we had to get another file. So yes, the, as far as the flowers, the flowers come, the templates come separately from the centers because I don't always use these for all the flowers. So if you choose to purchase the centers, you can. Otherwise, you can hand cut um, the way that I would normally on my tutorials. And V, I noticed that they were discounted. Was that is there a, a time limit for how long they will stay discounted? 
So because I just released these, typically I do a 50% off discount on the templates that we're working on during that month. So this month there was about 12 templates, uh, flower templates that were on sale. And because I released the centers bundle, um, that was also discounted as well. Now, being that it's a brand new release, the sale, the January sale will end tomorrow night, but I'm going to continue uh, uh, leaving the centers on sale for February. And then a new set of templates will be on sale for the month of February. And so now we're going to go into petal six and we're going to do the same thing. We're using our three eighths of an inch dowel and we're going to curl these edges just like we did for petal seven. Kim, uh, yes, Design Academy did receive them. What's your Design Academy? Um, uh, Forever Petals Design Academy is a private group that I created back in 2018. And it's a paid membership group for uh, paper florists that are looking for things like business insight, if they're looking for more detailed video tutorials, because on my business page, I stick to large paper flowers. But in Design Academy, we do Cricut projects, we create uh, flower bouquets, we create flower crowns, um, graduation caps shadow boxes, things that are more detailed, um, and we incorporate the Cricut as well. So um, that is something that I offer, but I don't have registration open all the time. Uh, my next registration will open in June for the remainder of the year. Oh, but once you're in, you're in? Um, it is an annual um, membership. So once you register, you can continue and um, renew your membership for the upcoming year if you choose to. But it's not like an automatic payment type thing where it's just a one time payment. When it's time to renew, I'll let everyone know and whether they want to continue or not, they, they can. Oh, very cool. I'm but they, for they do home. get, so because these were new releases, they got the centers uh, for free in the group. Mm -hmm. Anytime I release a new template, it, as long as they're an active and existing member, then they get any new patterns I release for free. Very cool. Yeah. So for petal six, we're going to go ahead and take um, our three at a time. And then now we're going to cut up the center. And for this one, we are going to cut three and a half inches. So I was going to actually write on here. So this one was four and a half, just so that way those viewing can see right. what I'm cutting. So a three and a half inch cut for petal six. Hey, Julie, did you make it to Florida? <laughs> so now we're going to go into petal five. Again, there are six petals and I am again going to take a dowel, but this time I'm going to take the red dot dowel, the red end, and that's going to be the five sixteenths of an inch. And I am again going to curl the right side away, but the left side is gonna be curled forward. So I'm gonna take this to the right and curl. Once I've curled the right side, I'm gonna take the left side and leave the dowel in the front and curl it at an angle coming towards us. So that way the curl pattern is basically opposite of each other. Got it. So um, I'm going to go back to petals seven and six. I <laughs> used a smaller dowel. I wasn't, I'm not. <laughs> so um, I'm going to make it a little bit thicker or a bigger roll. All right. I was looking at yours. Okay. <laughs> I was looking at yours and I thought, well, maybe it's just like it looks that way because she's an expert and mine like doesn't look like that. But no, it's I use the the thinner dowel. So, all right. <laughs> And you want to make sure for petal five, you do the same thing for the remaining petals. So again, we're only working three at a time. 
and there are a total of six petals per layer. So we're just splitting the each pile of petals into two groups. So that way we can um, curl them without injuring our fingers and, and hands. So all six petals of petal five have the same curl pattern. And then the cut down the center for petal five is going to be a two, uh, yeah, let's do a two inch cut okay. for petal five. Um, Virginia said flowers are harder than one might think. Oh, I wasn't doubting it. <laughs> <laughs> they are very unique. Yes. I feel like all crafting is right. Like even though they may look easy, there's always like little things that, oh, yeah. separate, that separate a beautiful project from an okay project. <laughs> I totally agree. And I feel like if it's something, obviously, that we're trying something new, um, there's always going to be those challenges until you get into the hang of things and do it on a regular basis and you'll get used to it. I do get asked often, how do I know how deep to cut on the petals? How do I know what base to use? And there's no, you know, chart that I use or I'm, I literally just go off of what I know and my experience to create them. So that's why I feel, you know, when I'm offering my templates, I don't want you to have to, or I don't want you to not be able to make more than just one flower. I want you to be able to create, you know, a variety of size flowers, a variety of styled flowers using the same exact template. So that way you can get the most out of the file and the pattern. V, do you ever buy someone else's files just to see what, what you would do with them? Or um, the only them? files that I have are Julie, and that's because we've collaborated uh, with PhotoFab Paper Flowers. We do, we've gotten together three times. Um, we did a flower camp in last summer. We did a Halloween spectacular, and then we did a Merry Makers um, a Christmas event where we go live either on the same day or show offer templates and I'll offer templates or new releases. So we swap templates okay. and I've done it that way with her. But as far as to purchase other templates to see how they are, no. <laughs> no, no, no. Just to see like, what, like I can, for me, like, you know, cause I buy different SVG files, but yeah, you, know, yeah. you can kind of put your own spin on it. So I was just curious, like if you had a, te if you, someone gave you a template, like how you would go about curly the flowers and how different it would be, you know, like. I actually have it never done that. Mm -hmm. Aside from Julie's, um, I don't think I've ever done that. I think me and Julie just have done that with our events that we've done, mm -hmm. but that's not a bad idea. <laughs> yeah, you know, like, I mean, I, I used to be obsessed with the food channel, like the food network. And so, you know, like following the same, you get the same recipe even. Oh yeah. You, you can't help but put your like, you know, little, little changes in there. Mm -hmm. And then it ends up being like, even though you started all the same way, like you end up differently. So I was just curious if like, if you, if you have done it, like your flower looked completely different than what they had originally designed. Oh yeah. No, I haven't done that. <laughs> Um, you have a question. Can I ask about how you measure the hexagon? When you say six inch hexagon, exactly where are you measuring it? We're measuring height. So this is a five and a half inch hexagon. So we're me measuring from one straight edge to the other straight edge, not from corner to corner. Because the corner to corner is wider. Perfect. Okay, so now we're going into petal number four, and this is our smallest petal size. So again, I'm going to take three at a time. I'm going to take the red uh, dowel, the five sixteenths of an inch, and I'm going to, again, curl the right side away at an angle. And then the left side is also going to come forward, just like we did for petal five. Okay. Uh, 
And then for our cut up the center, center of petal four, we are going to do an inch and a half cut on petal four. Okay. And that'll be our final cut for our petals. Now, I don't think I mentioned this in the beginning, but for our large paper flowers, we do uh, use hot glue. So I will be incorporating my full-size dual temp Gorilla hot glue gun. And we are also using uh, Gorilla hot glue sticks. Um, those are my go-to hot glue sticks. And this is an inch and a half. Oh, Julie. Yes, girl. Well, I was just telling everyone, Julie, that I went to get your link today and I'm like, wait a minute. She must have ran out because it was gone. But then I realized <laughs> you were told that you're on vacation, but I love it. I have mine. <laughs> so once you have all of your petals cut and styled, now we're going to get into assembling the petals. So we are all going to go back to petal seven, which is our largest petal that we're using today. And petal by petal, let me move this out of the way. We're going to take one petal at a time. And what we're going to do is we're going to be crossing over the two tabs. The cut down the middle created the base of, or created the cut to uh, create a base for our petal. So that way we can overlap these and you're going to see that these edges that we curled away are going to lift forward. Now, there may be a chance that when you cross over, your petals are going to go downward. But you just want to make sure before you cross over, lift up these edges and then cross over to ensure that those edges pop up. Okay. So I'm going to take some glue just to one of the sides, one of the two tabs, and I'm going to cross over to create my 3D petal. Now, as far as the crossover, you may be wondering, how much do I cross over? So for visual, I'm gonna use this marker and I'm gonna mark the halfway point on each tab from the center. So from the center to the right, this is more or less the halfway mark. And then from the center to the left, another halfway mark. When you cross over, those two marks are going to meet each other in the middle. And that's when you know that you crossed over enough. Now, when you do cross over, make sure that these two tabs are very flush to each other, meaning very flat. You do not want to cross over and then you have this sort of gap in the back and showing through. You want these to be very flat to each other when you're overlapping. You don't want any space. So I'm gonna do that, cross over, and just make sure the glue connects those two tabs. And how much glue are you putting on, Fee? Uh, not very much at all. I'm just doing a little bit here. Okay. As Got you it. can see, it's not, you know, oozing out of my hot glue gun. You just wanna make sure you have enough. You don't even have to go all the way from the top of the cut to the bottom, like about midway to the bottom edge should be fine. And now we're just gonna continue. So you're gonna continue this process for all six petals of this layer. ever use for this template like I would imagine that you could um just change how far up you cut and it would give you a different look exactly so, mm -hmm. um, that's exactly are there that. any no's to like you know don't go past this this line or don't make it too small like for the first layer 
What I definitely recommend, especially when you're using multiple layers. Now, if you're using two layers of petals, for example, if you're using petal seven and petal six only, um, you don't have to worry too much about what I guess what I'm trying to say is when you're using multiple petal sizes, the larger petal is always going to have the longer cut. Mm -hmm. The smaller petal is going to have a cut a little bit smaller or maybe an inch smaller than that, just because you got to think about how flat and open the larger petals are. And as you work your way to the center, the petals are going to lift taller. If I did I, one, you can't do the same cut for every petal because you got to think about the proportion of the cut to the actual petal. The petal sizes are going to decrease. So a, a four and a half inch cut for petal seven and petal six going down by three and a half, you can definitely, if you're using these same petals, you can do a shorter cut starting with petal seven, but always making sure that you decrease by either half an inch or an inch mm -hmm. as you get to the, the petals, you know, going in. Right. You're, you just want to make sure that you're not making your outer petal lift so tall so quickly because then you'll run out of space right. for the rest of the petals. Okay. Um, you have a question. Let me see. Uh, what makes you prefer the Gorilla Sticks over the other ones? Um, prior to using Gorilla, I was using AdTech Glue Sticks. Um, and they work well. There's nothing necessarily wrong with them for most flowers. But when it comes to roses, the Gorilla, I'm sorry, the AdTech Glue Sticks would not hold um, specific colored uh, cardstock together because of how smooth the cardstock could be. You can have 65 pound cardstock, but the texture may be different from one color to the next. And so very smooth um, and crisp 65 pound cardstock did not hold well with ad tech glue. So I, um, it was probably a few of us paper florists that came to the conclusion that Gorilla Glue was the glue to use when we made roses. So I only used it when I made roses, but then it got to the point where I was making a lot of roses and I just ended up sticking with Gorilla Glue going forward. So that's why I use Gorilla Glue. I trust that it's gonna work. We live in, or I live in Texas and making paper flowers for outdoor events. I know that I can trust that hot glue to keep my flowers intact as well. Oh, that's so good to know because yeah. <laughs> I you know because I do those big characters and I've had them like start to melt because, uh -huh. you know, in the direct sun. But that's so interesting that um so I'm using Sure Bonder. Uh -huh. Have you tested Sure Bonder for this? I have never tested Sure Bonder, but I am coming out with tutorials uh for reviewing glue sticks. The only thing is I am very uh, stuck to Gorilla Glue just because I know the quality, but I will definitely be open to try, uh, testing out Sherbonder hot glue with the Sherbonder glue gun um, because I do have two of them that I'm going to be posting reviews on. Okay, and you know your your sound is cutting out a little bit. Is it? It sounds a little bit further away than it did before. Okay, let me see. Am I clear? You're clear, but you just, just sound distant. Yeah, more distant. And it just happened like in the last two sentences. Hmm. Uh, Are you running low on battery, possibly? Uh, no, it, I'm more than 50%. Okay. I can plug my phone in. You totally I'm sound different from when you were explaining that. Yeah. Okay, hold on. Well, I can't wait for you to test it out because I do, um, <clears throat> excuse me, I love my Sherbonder glue, like gun, and I use Sherbonder sticks. So. Oh, okay. I know a lot of my paper crafting friends do use Sherbonder, so I'll be giving that a try for sure. Okay. Can, do I sound any different? You still sound bad. I mean, not bad, but it's <laughs> worse. We had it so good. <laughs> <laughs> So now it sounds like, yeah, you're, you're just distant, but we can still hear you clearly. Should I just put on my, my headphones? Oh, now it sounds a little bit better. Still not the original, but sounds better. I don't know what you just did. Did I, I open my air, 
for my headphones. Okay. Do y'all hear notifications coming through? No. Okay. Sorry. Let me check something really quick. And then we're getting a, su a suggestion for you to try your speakerphone. I don't know if that would. Okay. Can y'all hear me? Yes, but. but it's still bad? <laughs> yeah. Okay. Let me put on my, my headphones. Can you hear me? Yes. <laughs> it's still bad? It's, it's better, I think. Is it better? It's better, but not, not the same as before. But, I, but I'll take this. Okay, okay. Let me put y'all back here. I just realized I didn't have my notifications turned off. So I'm like, are y'all hearing all of these notifications? <laughs> okay. I no, I didn't, I didn't notice it. So you're good. Okay. <laughs> Let's see. It sounds like you're on one of those old tape recorders. <laughs> um, and then Cheryl said it did that the other day with Josie and then it fixed itself. So I don't know. And then sounds like you're underwater. <laughs> you know what? I just realized my headphones aren't even hooked up to my phone. They're hooked up to my iPad. <laughs> Hold on. Let me turn my Bluetooth off over here on my iPad. I was like, why am I hearing you talk or say something you already said? It's uh -huh. the volume on my iPad connected to my uh, my headphones. Hold on. Technology, don't you just love it? Oh, my gosh. <laughs> <laughs> right? I know. Don't get me started. Okay. Let me turn off Bluetooth over here. I know, but thank you, everyone, for being so patient. Okay, let me turn you guys on over here. Let's see. Okay, can you hear me? Yes. <laughs> But still not good. Now it, I mean, it, it's okay. It just, it was, <laughs> it's not as crisp and clear as it was at the beginning. That's all. I don't know what happened. I know. It was just, you were explaining and then all of a sudden you, you were cutting out just like more distant. But um, <laughs> Tamsin says she's so excited to meet you. Which class are you taking? <laughs> oh. She's probably going to take the one I'm taking. V, you're back. Am what I? did you do? Yes. I don't know what is happening. I don't know. <laughs> okay, you sound perfect. Don't okay, do okay. <laughs> I will not touch anything at the moment. <laughs> okay, so um, I think Cam is going to take the workshop that I'm taking in the morning on the 11th. Um, the 3D letter, and you moved or something because it's gone. <laughs> is it gone? Am I here? Am I here? You're You're here. You I'll tell you when, when it's unbearable. Okay, okay. What <laughs> happened? Stop doing this, phone. <laughs> okay, so um, we're going to go to pedal six, and we're going to do the same exact thing as far as our crossover and assembling the pedals. Um, are all of them going to cross over at that, you know, midpoint of the two slits? Yes, they okay. will all cross over at the same uh, distance. Now you're going to notice, of course, because the cut down the center is um, different, it's different size based off the pedal. The pedals are going to become a lot taller as you get to the smaller ones. Yeah, it's significant. You can, you can really tell. And you sound better. <laughs> <laughs> Not to harp on it, but <laughs> it's so amazing when you sound good. So V, I was asked on a live who I was most excited to meet. Um, so I'm going to put you under the spot the same way she did. <laughs> <laughs> who are you most excited to meet? 
I think for me, uh, I was having this conversation with Josie about how I don't do a lot of like video collaborations and things like that um, too often, but I do follow, like I was following most of the creators that are going to be there in Arlington. And I think for me, um, of course, Anne, I'm going to meet Anne, but um, probably Josie and Claudia. Uh Uh-huh. Just because I've been following them on TikToks over the pandemic, and that's how we found each other, or at least that's how I found them. Um, and because just because I wasn't on Instagram a lot the past, probably since 2020, um, I would just post and then I would get off. I wasn't very yeah. active on Instagram. So um, I found them on TikTok. And so they, I would watch their lives and things like that. And they knew who I was. And, oh, and yeah. so we all know who you are. <laughs> Josie, Josie was telling me, she was like, I don't think you understand how excited some of us are to meet you. And I'm like, really? <laughs> yeah, no, really? it was so funny because we were, well, first of all, that is such crazy validation for me because, you know, Claudia was my original co-host uh, for the workshop. And then now Josie's my second co-host. So the uh-huh. fact, out of all the creators, like you pick the two co-hostess is just um it makes me like really like i'm just beaming over that because that's really <laughs> um but yeah no when we were talking about you know who to invite and who to reach out to um josie brought you up and of course she's like well do you know her i'm like uh yes <laughs> <laughs> of course i mean there are some followers i mean some creators that you just know right like right you've seen their work for so long you've been following so it's just funny like um yeah, there was no need to explain who you were. I'm like, uh, yeah, I already follow <laughs> things. <laughs> and Josie's on, by the way. Yes, I see her. Hey, Josie. <laughs> so once we finish with pedal six, you're going to go to f- pedal five. And we're just going to continue the same exact process. A little bit of hot glue. And then your crossover um, going up to maybe like the halfway point of each tab. That one like stands up a lot. Yep. Yeah. You're definitely going to get a lot uh, more height with the pedal five and pedal four. But I am super excited to meet everyone. Um, I have a good, um, uh, probably a good five design academy members that are going to be there taking the workshop. Uh Uh-huh. Um, and I haven't met them. I've met Kathy before. Um, and then, but there's some other ones that I, I haven't met in person. So I'm super excited. Oh, I love that. Um, so what are you going to buy at Joanne's on our shopping spree? Um, I want, I feel like we need to go get the scissors so everyone can see where you buy your scissors. (laughs) Yes. And Joanne's, I like their open uh, scrapbook paper. Now, as much as I use cardstock in my tutorials, I do incorporate scrapbooking paper for layered petals, especially during Valentine's Day. That's like my favorite time to use a layered, like to do a layered flower to give it like a patterned look. I don't know. I don't have any made here. But I do. Ha- I might have some pictures to I show like you. I stock your account to see that. Yeah. So uh, typically during Valentine's Day, uh, during the month of February, I'll create flowers that have like a pattern Valentine's look with like a bordered solid color uh, uh-huh. petal. And I make those. I remember. I think the one of the first ones I made was a pretty floral pattern. But I feel like Joanne's has a good selection of their open scrapbooking paper, like their 12 by 12 sheets. Yeah. So that is what I'm excited about for Joanne's. I think our shopping cart is going to be all paper. That's pretty much what I've <laughs> said so far. Yeah. I might have to stock up on sprinkles. I love sprinkles. 
Oh, uh, yes. Shakers. See, I don't do a lot of like shakers or for me, it's very intimidating. <laughs> and um, I don't I, I've done a few like for family birthdays. But yeah. <laughs> well, you know, you're going to be doing a 3D letter shaker. Yes. And I'm super excited about it. <laughs> Y'all are going to teach me, and I'm super excited. All right, let's see. Okay, so I'm done with mine. Okay, same here. So once you've completed all of your petals, um, once you complete all of your petals, we're going to go ahead and take our five and a half inch hexagon, and we need to determine how far petal seven, which is our first layer, I'm going to move these out of the way, should be brought onto the base. Remember, the reason we use the polygon shapes is because we want to make sure we're distributing the petals evenly to give us a nice rounded flower and to make sure our petals aren't like lopsided. But in addition to that, although we know where to place them, we need to figure out how far onto the base they should be added. Again, that's gonna help distribute the weight of the petals. So that way we don't have lopsided flowers or petals that are drooping over time. Um, so now we're gonna take a ruler and we are going to go to the straight edge of our hexagon. And for our very first layer, sorry, I keep flipping this. We're gonna bring this first layer of petals onto the base at an inch and a half. So from the straight edge, you're gonna go to the midway point of it, start your ruler measurement and mark with a dot an inch and a half. I'm trying to get close. You see that little dot there? And then you're gonna rotate and you're gonna continue to every straight edge and mark at an inch and a half. Okay. And you should end up with six one and a half inch marks. And this will be our guide on how far each of our first layer of petals should be brought onto the base. So as you can see, there are six. Yep, perfect. I feel so much more comfortable this time. <laughs> <laughs> so once you have those marked, you're gonna start with your first layer or your first petal, which is petal seven. Now, when you place your petal, you're gonna take this very center point all the way up to the mark, the one inch, one and a half inch mark we made, okay? Now, if you notice, when we add our second petal, it's going to overlap the first petal. So what I need to do is I need to take my first petal and I'm only gonna put glue on the back side of the left bottom edge of our petal. We only have an inch and a half worth of our base to work with. So when you add your glue, don't go higher than an inch and a half because then you're gonna get it stuck to your table. So again, here's our petal. I'm gonna place the glue underneath the bottom left side of it. And I'm gonna bring that up to the one and a half inch mark and press down. This right bottom edge of the petal is gonna stay unglued until the very end of this layer, okay? So now I'm gonna take this and I'm gonna rotate clockwise. And then the rest of the petals, the remaining five petals, when you flip your petal over on the bottom edge, you're gonna put glue across the bottom. You don't have to worry about the right or the left side only. So you put your glue, bring the center bottom edge of it up to the one and a half inch mark, press down, and then you're gonna rotate again. And you'll do this until the very last petal of the layer. Thank you, Kathy. Thanks, guys, for tuning in today. Aw, uh, thank you, Josie. 
Now, I love doing this um, crafting while I'm able to ask you questions at the same time. It's just, it's so different than watching. And, you know, I do YouTube tutorials all the time. But uh -huh. it's nice to be able to, you know, quickly ask you and know, like, if I did make a mistake, how to quickly fix it, you know? <laughs> oh, yeah, for sure. And, I, and as the, on this side of things, I love being able to interact with my flower community and those that are watching. Um, I know, you know, once the live ends, it's to everyone else watching the replay, there's just a lot of talking. But uh, for me, I've been able to build, you know, a relationship with my paper flower makers that watch my videos and within my little paper flower community. And that's what I really love about because, uh, about this process. And I don't think I I would ever necessarily shy away from doing the live videos. I've been asked quite a bit about, you know, just quick and to the point videos, which are great and I totally understand. But sometimes it's just like, I, I don't want to lose, you know, the connections that I have with my supporters because if it wasn't for y'all, I would not be able to do this on a regular basis. <laughs> So our last petal, you're going to put glue at the bottom and you're just going to make sure the left side of it goes tucked underneath that very first petal. Okay, so I'm going to bring it there. So that's why we didn't glue it all the way down because of that overlap, making sure the right side of every petal is on top of the petal on the left. I'm sorry, the petal on the right. So then you're just going to go in and glue that very first petal down just to secure everything in. And you've completed your first layer of petals. And this is giving us about a 15 inch paper flower. Awesome. How are you feeling, Anne? How are you feeling? Love it. So much better this time. <laughs> <laughs> and also, it's so much nicer for me to be able to see your screen like completely before. Oh, yeah. because on Instagram, I was using my phone. So I was see. I'd had to like look up and it was, you know, this is just nice. I can see you straight ahead. Yeah, for sure. So now that we have our first layer complete, we're gonna take our ruler and we are gonna connect all of the one and a half inch dots with a straight line. We're just gonna connect them. So that way we end up with another visible hexagon. And this will just help us with our next petal placement. Now it may be lopsided, that is okay. Don't don't be too critical with the hexagon shape, just as long as you have six edges. You can tell mine's a little off, but we're not gonna let that stop us. <laughs> so once you have your hexagon, you're just going to take the bottom edge of your next layer of petals and you're gonna bring that right up to the straight edge of the hexagon, but you do not wanna cover the edge. So the bottom of petal six is actually gonna be a little bit higher than the straight edge of that hexagon, but you just want it, let me show you. So I'm gonna place it to where it's right above the hexagon. I don't want the bottom edge of it to cover any edges of the hexagon. So place it to where, I guess these, these side angles meet the corners of the hexagon. They kind of will intersect with them. So I'm gonna take my first petal. I'm only putting glue on the bottom left, just like we did on the very first petal of the previous layer. And then I'm gonna place this and make sure that petal six is in between your petal sevens, okay? Thank you, Julie. And then you'll rotate and you're gonna continue with the same process. The remaining five petals are going to be added one by one along the straight edges of the hexagon.
So I haven't had dinner, B, and um, this is how I think I know I'm hungry. These petals <laughs> remind me of chips. <laughs> <laughs> Do you see it? They're kind of like lace. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> or at least because mine is colored this way as well. <laughs> Okay, so I'm just, I needed more hot glue sticks. B, is there such a thing as too little glue um, when you're doing the petals? Um, yes, depending on your petal sizes. You don't want to under glue it. Um, I have done that before, like when I'm doing the crossover on the petals. Um, you know, I'm just maybe going too quickly and I'm not, I don't put enough glue. And then when I get to this point where I get to the layers of adding them to the flower, I pick up a petal and they've either separated or I didn't hold them down enough uh -huh. to where it widens out the petal versus how it should have been overlapped. It like detaches essentially. But you, do, you don't wanna go too much with the hot glue. It there's, doesn't need to be puddles, I guess you can say. Right. Okay. And then again, our last petal for the layer you're gonna make sure that you lift up the very first petal that we didn't glue all the way down. Bring this final petal in to its place. And then we can go in and secure the very first petal here with a little bit of glue. And that'll complete your second layer of petals. I love it. I know. I'm loving it right now. So pretty. And then next, we're going to go in with petal five. Now, we don't have to do any additional lines from our hexagon. We're going to go to the corners of the hexagon, which is going to be in between your previous layer, which is petal six. The highest little bottom center of your petal is gonna go up to the corner of the hexagon, but don't cover it, okay? Still leave it visible. Now, the difference here is that our right side of our petal for this layer is going away and the left side is forward. So your left side is gonna be the overlap side, the side that's on top of the petal next to it. So that means um, the bottom right side of this petal is gonna be the part that's glued down first. Got it. So the right bottom side, and then we're gonna bring it up to place. And then the left side can still be lifted up. And then our rotation is gonna be counterclockwise. And then the remaining petals will get glue across the bottom and you're just gonna continue going up to the corners of the hexagon and rotate. How are you feeling about it, Anne? So I, I have to admit, this time around, I'm more comfortable. However, <laughs> <laughs> um, I feel like my hexagon, um, you know, the, the middle piece is so um, wonky that I'm really using more for a visual, making sure that it, I'm in between the two flowers behind it. Do you know what I mean? Like, right, right. I feel like I'm using that more than I am using the hexagon to determine where to place it other than just how far in I'm going to go. Okay. And then for your last petal, make sure the right side of it goes tucked underneath the petal on the right, which was the first petal. Bring it up to its placement. And then once your final petal is there, then you're going to go ahead and secure and glue down that very first petal on its bottom left side. Okay. 
Is my sound still bad? No, it, it went in and out, but now you're wonderful. And okay. you've been wonderful. I probably shouldn't have brought it up because <laughs> now it's going to mess up again. <laughs> It's looking real. I love it. Yes. Okay. So now we're in our final layer of petals. So we still have our hexagon in the center. I'm going to take the highest mid. Oh, no. I'm shifting. I don't know what happened. Okay. I'm going to take the highest mid point on the bottom edge of the petal where it's like a tip of a little triangle. And I'm going to bring that right up to the straight edge of the hexagon, meaning these corners here are going to cross over the hexagon edge. But let me show you all what I mean real quick. So the bottom right side of this petal, it should only be glued. And I'm going to bring this up to the straight edge. But as you can see, I don't know how close we can get, but the highest point of the bottom edge goes right up to the straight edge of the hexagon. So here's a straight edge here, pretend there's a line, and you can see it right in here. Okay, so these corners are covering the rest of the hexagon edge. And then so you're going to like a little tip of the pencil mark that's at the at that Yes, just a little tip of the pencil mark, a little peak of the straight edge. Mm -hmm. And then the did you put glue across the whole petal? Nope, just the bottom right okay. side again. And then you're going to continue your rotation counterclockwise when adding the remaining petals. The remaining five petals will get glue across the bottom. And we're going to continue the same placement. Just making sure petal four is in between the petal five, which is the previous layer. So I don't know what to make of this comment. <laughs> Sharon said, Anne's reminds me of a magnolia bloom, which makes me feel like it's not what yours is. <laughs> hey, there's no... There's no um, flower. We're not identifying like what specific flower we're making. So if it looks like a magnolia bloom, then that's what it is. <laughs> now, if we were working with the rose template and it looked like a magnolia, then there would be questions. But I think it's perfectly fine. Okay. Yeah, I don't have too many templates that are flower specific. If I'm being quite honest, I know what a rose is, a sunflower, a peony, um, a magnolia, <laughs> but I don't have templates that are, I don't have too many templates that are flower specific, just more so the design, the different designs. How often do you come out with a new design B? Um, I typically come out at least with one or two a month, but sometimes I just don't come with that, come out with any for a month or so. But mm -hmm. typically within a year, I maybe come out with, I would say 12 to 15. Oh my goodness. Just depends. And then our last petal, make sure the right side of it again goes behind the petal on the right, bring it up to its placement, and then secure that very first petal down that wasn't glued initially on the bottom left side. Okay, just add a smidge of glue and then press down. And you've completed the petal portion of your project. The coloring and the angle is different than these. Oh yeah, hers is the, the is it like an ivory cream color? It is, yes. It's so pretty. Not only that, but the way yours is shaped, I feel like it's it's got more of like a, a ribbon feel where mine, I, I did not get the same um, defined curl, I guess. I don't know how else to say it. Maybe you're being shy on your curls. Oh, no, I, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like my curls are a little bit more 
They're very pronounced. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Mine are not as much. And part, I think part of it too was, I don't know if you remember, but when I first started, I didn't use the bigger, like, so mine was t like, it Oh, a lot smaller. Curl as much. Yeah. Yeah. And then once you've completed your puddles, we're going to take our centers that we cut with the Cricut. Now, um, I think, Anne, I told you to cut six, right? Yes. Okay, so it's going to be up to you on how many of those you want to use. You can use all six, uh -huh. but there's a few different ways. Because of the, the little circular ends on yours, uh -huh. you can simply take them and your first layer bend them out. So that way, when they're lifted, they're flat because we will lift the edges or the little stems. Okay. So I am just going to pinch them outwards. And again, I made we made these in five inch size. Okay. So then Essentially, all of the edges are facing down, like they're curved down, increased downward. And then you would just add it in here and you can see how they, well, I'll lift it up in a second, but you'll see how they lift up. So that way they're flat and they're giving them that, an, an, I'm sorry, an additional dimension. And so once you've done that for the outer edges, you're going to take this center, you're going to flip it upside down to add some glue. Again, you don't need a lot. And then you're going to add that to the center of your flower. Okay. So that's our first layer. And then you you can continue this process with the other layers as well. Of bending, bending it face down. Yep. Okay. Now, once you get towards the center, you can begin to crease them opposite, but you don't have to do them all the same direction. So some can be creased towards you, and then some can be creased away from you. Every other one or however, you can do two and one, one and two, just so that way they, they go different ways and they fill up the center of the flower. Because okay. what's going to happen is we're going to end up lifting these little stems that they're on. And I'll show you that just right here. So you are you can go to the center. You have a basically a little base, the middle of your uh, flower center. And then you're just going to crease these up. So that way they lift. And again, that's going to give our center more dimension in the middle. And you're starting that with the second one already that you're going to bend some some of the... Yeah, you can start with the second one. I typically like just the first one to have them all the same direction going away. Okay. Um, just so that way it fills in that bottom space. But then yeah. the next few layers, you can bend them um, in different directions. Just so that way they kind of fill up any gaps um, as you start to build. Okay. And I'm going to rotate this one a little bit so it's staggered. Like the yes. Petals down. Yeah. You just don't want them to align exactly together. You want to fill in those middle spaces. Okay. And then I'm going to continue. I think I'm going to fit four in mine. So again, my third layer, I'm going to do the same thing where the little ends are going to be um, creased in different directions. Do you ever do glitter for the middle? Um, I have used glitter cardstock before um, when it comes to these centers. I have. You don't Main, sound like you love it, though. Main, <laughs> yeah, well, I'm not a big glitter fan. Yeah. Um, but just because of the mess, not because it's not pretty. But um, if I'm using this Cricut centers, I'll do the I'll do glitter centers every now, now and again. But I do like using the foil cardstock more so than oh. glitter. Okay. Um, the foil cardstock is nice. Um, you can find it in, you know, different colors, like the metallics, like the gold, right. silver, rose gold as well. 
So we're just gonna continue and bend these edges up so that way they lift and they don't push down on the previous layers. So just crease the arms from the center piece. It's starting, mine is starting to remind me of a dandelion. Oh it's yeah? Super, like I'm surprised at how it does. It, it really fills up the whole space. So it doesn't uh -huh. And the thing, it's funny that you mentioned a dandelion because the original um, center, I guess you, you can say, and a lot of paper florists will mention that they used when it came to Cricut was the specific image was the dandelion image in Cricut Design Space. Oh, I have that written down from the last, for, from our last yeah. slide when you mentioned Yeah, it. so that one was has been pretty popular for flower centers to cut with Cricut. So it definitely does give it a lot of dimension, a lot of detail in the middle. And it was all, this center was cut with Cricut. Now, as I mentioned, um, you know, in the beginning of the video, we you don't necessarily need a Cricut to, to make your paper flowers. But these types of detailed centers are cut with the machine, um, not recommended for hand cutting. But um, I do offer tutorials on how to hand cut your centers. I love it. <laughs> um, glitter and foil tend to have a brown backing. Is there something you do to hide that? Is, I'm sorry, what was the question? Oh, because you said you like um, foil. Um, yeah, the foil. Yeah, so the Michaels does have that. Um, it has that craft cardstock on the back uh -huh. of their foil cardstock. I just don't end up uh, bending the little ends of the center uh -huh. in the direction where it's going to show that foil. Got it. And half of the time, the foil is just so metallic and pretty that it kind of voids out the, the craft cardstock anyway. But if you're using it for the center, I just don't recommend bending the little ends to where that craft cardstock will show. You can still make it nice and full without, you know, bending those in opposite or different directions. So my last one's going to go right in here. And that pretty much filled up. Just gonna use this dowel to push down in the middle. And that fills up our flower. I'm almost there. I put in five. Um, I just put in my fifth one. It's so pretty, V. So I, you know, I keep thinking about food. It sort of reminds me also of like little mushrooms. <laughs> Like, you know, the string mushrooms? Yeah, yeah. There's mine. <laughs> I love it. There's oh, yours is so different. It looks so different with just that um, elongated, you know, because I thought ours was going to look very similar because mine was circular. Mm -hmm. Yours, like, it really changes with that. Like, Oh, um, yeah. Cool. Definitely gives a different, a little bit of a different look in that middle. I love it. It's so pretty. Good job, Anne. <laughs> Do I go? I still have the one. Do I? I'm going to fold it. I'm just going to see. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to add it. But um, yeah, I can't wait to see you. And oh my gosh, it's like so soon. I know it's going to be here. And I leave on my vacation before the vacation, before the gathering. Oh, that's right. On a Friday. So. I will oh, be out of the Friday. office. Yeah, I leave Friday and come back next Tuesday. And then you leave Thursday or Friday again? And then I leave Friday morning up to Arlington. Oh, right. And so yeah. you can catch V, first of all. V will be live on the Barely Art Instagram page. Um, but I think when they when they stream live, they you can catch them on multiple platforms. Um, but V will be on there with Ema from Whimsy Designs USA. I'm so looking forward to that one. Um, it's going to be then, so much fun. <laughs> yeah, it, have you guys decided what you're making? Like which? Not yet, but I do need to get with her before I leave on Friday. <laughs> so we will make she sure that came, that's all. You organized. guys are like totally traveling all over because she just, I think she's back from Vegas, but she was in Vegas this weekend. <laughs> Man, February. Well, I guess end of January, February is a traveling time. 
Yeah. So you'll catch V there and then V on Saturday. If you're taking workshop number one, which is the 3D letters, you may sit next to V in class. <laughs> and then you, may get some re you may get some requests on who should be sitting next to you know, V. First come, first serve. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> there are only so many spots next to V. You're just going to have to get <laughs> Um, but then at the meet and greet is in between workshops one and two for all the um, in-person workshop attendees. So you get a chance to meet B along with 17 other, you know, crafters that you may have seen and um, all around the different platforms. So it's going to be amazing. We have so many different, you know, when you were talking about TikTok, uh -huh. um, I was sort of just like breaking down, um, you know, everybody's reach, social media reach and like what they're known for and their niche and all that stuff. And we have such a wide var variety, but you are leading the group in our TikTok. Uh, <laughs> I'm account. turning my camera around real quick. Yeah. So uh, when you said that I did it, because I've always, my main platform, I feel like I'm most comfortable on Instagram. So uh -huh. whenever I follow people, I just assume that you are also on Instagram. Do you know what I mean? Whereas yeah. You said you just post and go. Um, yeah, I, I've i done a lot of posting and going with Instagram for a couple of years now. And I don't know what my deal is, <laughs> but um, I'm, I'm doing my best for 2023 to post more over there um, and just really be more active on Instagram. Um, I'm very active, of course, here on Facebook um, and I haven't been too active like on lives on TikTok or anything, but I do think it's very important as a creator and small business owners to really take advantage of all platforms. So as you mentioned how I may be in the lead with, you know, the, the number of followers that I have and things like that. Um, I took into consideration, you know, when you're building your brand and your business on, on social media platforms to really put a lot of effort into all of the platforms, as much work as it is. Um, I think that's a super important because, you know, you know how the algorithms work and Instagram and Facebook and TikTok. So you never know when, you know, you're going to be, you know, on a, you may be on a high on Instagram, but on a low on Facebook and vice versa. Brand, <laughs> which confuses me. I'm like, why is this happening? But we love both of them. But yeah, I think it's important to not, you know, necessarily neglect one social media platform over the other, because in the end, it's really just going to help you as a small business owner or content creator across all platforms. I mean, but just looking at the two of us, right? Like, I wouldn't, I don't think I would have found you on TikTok. Oh, well, yeah, you know I mean? yeah. So like I like my favorite platform is Instagram. So that's where I scroll the most. Mm -hmm. So if you're not on Instagram, I wouldn't see your crafts mostly because I go on TikTok and I'll post and I'll go on Facebook and I'll post for right. instance. Um, but I hop off pretty quickly. Like I post and I check in like a minute or two of scrolling and then I'm uh -huh. back to Instagram. And, <laughs> you know, so it's just funny, like how we're just comfortable on certain platforms. But you yeah, know, we have to be on all of them because we don't know our followers where they like to be the most so. right mm -hmm. and then also just really posting um so I, I and i will say this in the beginning of my process of building my social media there were times where i felt like i'm just posting too much or i feel like my followers are seeing some similar things constantly on my page so i would shy away from posting um but then you realize, and as you grow, and as I've learned more about social media, you just really have to be okay and accept that what, what you post at 2 a.m., I'm not 2 a.m., you know, maybe 9 a.m., and what you post at 2 p.m., they're going to be two separate audiences, you know what I'm saying? So not necessarily posting the same thing in two, you know, two of the same thing in one day, but um, just being okay with repeating yourself in maybe a different way with that same information just because somebody may not have seen it at, at nine o'clock and those who support me or you or whoever they follow and are on our pages regularly they're not going to have a problem seeing the same thing over again <laughs> right but you know what it's funny because i mean i'm sure you're the same way where 
we're so busy. Like we scroll, we post, we scroll. And then after a while, like I would, you know, every once in a while, I'll think back and I'm like, wait a minute, I haven't seen so-and-so post in a long time. Like things drop off your page. You don't oh, always yeah. see it. So it's like, you do need to post. It's hard as like, as a creator to post the same or similar things, because I feel like I'm being repetitive or not getting out, not putting out good content or right. every post. I feel like I want to have a good point that I'm sharing mm -hmm. so of the same project. It's hard to post four pictures, let's see, four different times or whatever. Yeah. My husband says I need to do it because he, the same follower is not going to see all four. It's very exactly. unlikely. Um, but it's hard for me to be like, hit that, you know, enter button and post <laughs> somewhere that I posted. So I post generally, I just post once a day, even though I know I should post more. Mm -hmm. I'm fighting, I'm fighting that feeling. <laughs> yeah, yeah, for sure. And I totally understand because I was in that place at one point, but now I've gotten to the point of, okay, I need to post here, 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 you know, and just make sure I'm consistent because consistency is definitely the secret weapon when it comes to pushing your, your page out on social media, on any platform. It's just being consistent with it. Do you stagger all your posts like through the different platforms? Yes. Yeah, so I do all my editing off of the platforms just to avoid, you know, the little watermarks that right. they offer. But I do um, record content off, I edit, and then I will post, um, you know, if I post some, whatever I posted today on Facebook, I'm going to post tomorrow on TikTok. And then on day three, I'll post on Instagram. Um, but I also make sure that you know, Instagram is more of a quick, for me, I see it as more of a, a shorter a video time span than I would on Facebook. So I'll take that same video, but I'll cut it even shorter, maybe an additional 10 seconds, just to be able to post it on Instagram. It is additional steps, um, but I'm still not having to record, you know, one video for Facebook, one video for TikTok, one video. It's not, you know, taking up so much time as where of I'm recording one video, but utilizing that across all platforms and just editing it a little bit different because yeah. it's just like two seconds. So, or just changing the music that's in the background. But yeah, as you grow with social media and the changes that they make, you, you begin to learn all of these little things that you can do just to make you're posting a little bit easier, still time consuming for sure. It is. I know just making that little change, you're like, hold on. And then you get distracted <laughs> by other things. And the next thing you know, it's, you know, two hours later and you're like, oh my God, I didn't post it. <laughs> Sometimes I'll just go back and like post the original that I wanted to make edits to, but no. Oh, yeah. And, and it's also just when it comes to your posting, um, Hold on, where was I going? <laughs> I lost my train of thought. We're making like just little edits. I mean, you're probably yeah. tailoring it to your audience on the different platforms. Yeah, because you know, I really, you know, like I mentioned with Instagram is having, you know, you, you end up on reels and then you're scrolling and some of these reels are just so fast. So I feel like people are used to Instagram reels being a little bit more quick than your Facebook or your TikTok. Facebook, I'll create a minute reel and I'll be okay. I know that it's going to get seen. Um, just because people, I feel, are on Facebook for longer periods of time, just like TikTok. So they're going to see it, and if they decide to stay, they'll stay. But, yeah, a lot of these little techniques that you learn along the way. <laughs> I know. Well, and the hard thing, too, is you don't know what's right. Like, we have a feeling and we think that's, you know, it's, um, we're getting feedback where it feels like it's reinforcing what we think, but right. I don't know. And then you'll get wrong sometimes. And I, then I feel like, okay, I'm back to square one. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just going to post and we'll see, we'll see what happens. But yeah. Um, Thank you so much for being on again. And I can't wait to, you know, like we'll figure it out one day. I'm going to teach you and off the mat. <laughs> yes. Yes. And, and record you on there. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you so much for having me. And you did an amazing job on your paper flower. I'm really excited for XOXO craft girls weekend um, in February in Arlington. So thank you again for just being amazing. You've been so awesome and welcoming and I've enjoyed our lives and our chats as well. So 
Yay. All right. Well, thank you guys. Have a good night. We'll see you later. Bye. Bye.